How's it going everyone? Today I wanted to talk to you about a way to automatically remove silence from your videos. A way to remove silence from your videos for free. You don't have to buy any video editing software for this. We're going to use FFmpeg and I created a bat file where all you need to do is drag and drop the video you want to remove the silence from and it will do it. Now this program I'm calling Jump Cutter Ultra because it's based on a program called Jump Cutter by Kerry KH. I'll put a link to his version of it and I turned it into an executable. The executable uses FFmpeg and I created a bat file with all the commands so all you have to do is drag and drop into the bat file. The bat file has pre-configured variables which you can modify if you want. I'll show you how to do that. But originally it was a Python script. Originally it was a Python script and I converted it to an executable using PyInstaller. Wow, it is loud out here, man. Nice sunny day, people doing yard work. So I'll definitely run Jump Cutter Ultra on this video, but it's gonna pick up other stuff. So I'll have to do some manual cutting, but nowhere near as much as I'd have to do if I was doing all the cutting myself. Now I used to spend a lot of time editing. Every time I shoot a video, I try to make it I try to make it so that it's not too boring but still has a lot of information in it. it seems like every time I make a how-to, some people say, wow, this is really too long and they get mad and some other people say, get really mad and say this is too short. Can't make everybody happy. But I decided I definitely want to cut out lulls in my videos and I think when you start editing video, you get better as you go. Like the audio on my channel used to be pretty horrible. <laughs> and now it's not as horrible. I mean, I like it. I mean, like I bought this lapel mic and uh, it, I really like it a lot or lavalier mic, whatever they're called. But I can just pause in between thoughts and Jump Cutter will, Jump Cutter Ultra will, Jump Cutter Ultra will cut out the silence. See, there's cars going by and I don't know how much of that is gonna be picked up by this microphone. So one of the things about using this program is you want to control the audio of your environment. For example, you don't want a lot of noise around because it's kind of like turning your camcorder or your video camera into a voice activated recorder. Now you just record and record, but when you, when you feed that video file into Jump Cutter Ultra, it acts like, it turns it basically into voice activated video recording where it only keeps the parts where you're talking or where it hears something above a certain threshold. And you can set the threshold, I'll show you the settings. You can set the threshold to whatever you want and you also set the frames that the frame rate, no, not the frame rate, you set the frames before and after. So, I mean, you can't change that. I mean, it's just a certain value. So it applies it to the beginning and the end because sometimes if you say things that end with an S, the S is lower. For example, like animals, the S is lower than the rest of the word. And if it's too aggressive, it'll cut that off. So you can put like, okay, keep five frames, keep 10 frames, keep 60 frames after you hear something and then cut. Or, and then start recording, you know, 60 frames or five frames, whatever that variable is set to into how you want to record. So it's, you can't change the, the beginning and end frames. Like you can't have the beginning frames be different than the end frames, but it works pretty well. So you definitely have to record with that in mind. You have to think like, okay, the video is only gonna be kept during the time I'm talking or for like a second or two. I mean, you could change the frame rate. You can set the frame buffer to whatever you want. You can say, okay, I want two seconds before it starts hearing me talk and after it starts hearing me talk to be kept. So whatever your frame rate is, just double that. If it's 30 frames a second, change it to 60. If it's 60 frames a second, change it to 120. So then that will actually end up having even double that between hearing, between talking. Like if you set it to two seconds, I want it to keep two seconds before and after it hears me say something, then it's gonna end up being four seconds between cuts or between, between audio. So I haven't used this GoPro, this is a GoPro Hero 2 in quite a while, and I just thought I would go for a walk. It's really nice, but again, this kind of environment is not gonna be good for a jump cutter because there's all this other noise. We've got this crow, we've got people doing yard work, and so I'm gonna have to do some manual edits, but it's still so much less time than what it would take me to do if I did this on my own. There's cars. So this program saves me a ton of time. I used to get in front of my computer and just dread cutting out all of the lulls and all of the silence. I found some kind of program that you can use with Adobe Premiere, but that looked complicated and I don't use Adobe Premiere because I just don't see a need to spend that kind of money. There's lots of people that use Adobe Premiere and they've got skills, they know what they're doing and it works fine, but I don't, I don't at least not yet. 
And there's some people that when they talk, they can just keep going and keep going and they never stop talking. There's no cuts and they just go and go. I'm not like that. I'm not good at that. I have a lot of lulls in between things I say. Maybe I have ADD or something like that. I don't really write scripts. I have before and it seems to work. I mean, I probably should, but I don't really do it very much. So I pause and I think, what should I say next? What's my point? I run it on all my intros and my outros. I record my intros and my outros separately as separate files. And that works out really well because I usually keep that pretty tight. I usually don't have a lot of frames between the beginning and ending of my talking. But whereas in the body of a video, I will have more, I want more of a buffer because I might be doing something or showing something. And so I might say, hey, keep two frames, or I'm sorry, two seconds uh, before and after I talk. So there'll be like a four second gap between me talking, but it'll be cutting, you know, two seconds and then cuts, two seconds of silence and then it cuts to something else. Again, it's a threshold. You set the threshold for when it hears sound. One problem with these GoPro heroes is like some of these Hero 2s at least, it's like they just randomly stop recording. And that's lame. Anyways, maybe this is not a good option for vlogging or something. It's kind of like a vlog, I guess. But it might not really work that well for a vlog. Talking about jump cutter, jump cutter might not be a good option for a vlog. Especially if you're especially if you're trying to vlog like in a loud environment. So jump cutter, or should I say jump cutter ultra? would be good for, I guess, vlogging if you can control your environment, the sound, if you're vlogging in an area where your your voice is gonna be the loudest, like especially maybe if you have like a lapel mic. I mean, you're probably still gonna have to do some manual cutting if there's background noise that gets louder than your voice or as loud as your voice. But if not, you won't have to do any. I've done a lot of videos where 70 to 95% of the cuts are all jump cutter. I have so much less time vested in cutting out lulls and silence from my videos. I mean, it has been a very big game changer for me. And like, there's a lot of lulls I have in my videos. I'm not like some people that can just talk to the camera and they just keep going and going and going and they just keep progressing with their thoughts. I'm not good at that. There's people I see that are really good at that and I think, how do they do that? I'm not like that. My brain doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So this program comes in handy for me. But again, this is originally called Jump Cutter. I renamed my variant to Jump Cutter Ultra. I'll put a link to the author's version of it, which is a Python script, which again, I modified and I converted to an executable. So you don't have to worry about setting up Python because you don't need Python now, because I made it an executable. So everything's contained in the exe file. And then I'm also, I'm putting that in a zip file along with FFmpeg and a bat file that you can drag and drop and I'll show you the really cool things you can do with it. I don't know how much of the last take I did was deleted or not recorded because this stopped recording all of a sudden. So, we'll see. All right guys, here's how it works. Um, for those of you that want to just get right into it, just uh, download this file right here and extract these programs or these files from this zip file. And it'll be jumpcutterultra.bat, jumpcutterultra.exe, openpccutter.bat, which are the ones that I use, so you can see what presets I use, and then ffmpeg. And I'll give you an example how it works. Make sure there's no spaces in the file names. Make sure there's no spaces in the file names, and then just drag and drop, and I'll give you an example. Uh, let's see, the intro I did, the first intro before it cut out, uh, is 8 minutes and 49 seconds, and I ran it on jump cutter and it converted it to five minutes and 58 seconds. And the way I have the bat file set up is it will put the time and then the date. It will append that to the beginning of your video file. So here, and then the second cut was three minutes and 28 seconds and it converted it. I did three different, you know, I did four different versions, uh, but the first one is the one I'm, I'm putting in the video. And uh, the reason why is because at the end I say, uh, we'll see, and it cuts off the last part of me saying, we'll see. And I tried to make it so that it kept that in there, but with all the other noise, I tried to change the frame buffering uh, before and after, and then it made it longer than I wanted, and the cuts weren't as crisp as I wanted. And then I tried to mess with the audio sensitivity, and it picked up too much other stuff of cars driving by and stuff like that. So. That's just one example. If you have like a studio or a room where it's just you talking, you don't have a bird chirping all the time or something else going on and your voice is the main thing that you hear, it's the strongest sound in your video, 
it'll work perfectly fine you won't really have to deal with stuff like that so here's how you do it you just drag and drop it I'll show you this again I'll do this again for you to see just this file drag it and I'm gonna do it on this one drop it and yeah so now what it does is it takes all of the frames every single frame and it converts it to a JPEG you can see right here uh, it converts it to a JPEG and so you need a good amount of space it can this can take up a lot of space but you can change some of the variables in the bat file I'll show you so that it can make the frames lower quality but you may not be able to tell but it'll be fi smaller file size and this one that I have it it's using my GPU to encode so um, yeah right now what it's doing is it's converting all of the frames to JPEGs and then it will analyze the audio and then it will keep only the frames that has the audio that matches the threshold variables that are set in the bat file and then it will convert that to uh, an MPEG an MPEG4 an MP4 file and right here you can see this is the time of where it is in the video file so it's only what three minutes and 28 seconds and this is it converting it to MPEG uh, to MJPEG to JPEG files and soon here it'll show you all the frames that it's saving and that will be the ones that match the part of the audio that fits the parameters that we put in the bat file all right now it's converting it to you see it's using my GPU H264 underscore NVENC the NVIDIA encoder on the card and this is the speed that it's doing it it's definitely faster for me using my GPU which is really nice so it's doing the frames into an MPEG-4 file and then it muxes the audio. All right, and then now it's done. You hit space to continue. And then here we have it right down here. What problem with these and you can see this is, this is the file. So it's, uh, it's done. So that is how you use it. Now let me show you how you can change some of the settings. Right click on the bat file and go to edit. And down here it shows all of the variables. And I'll tell you what I did to modify this. Okay, right here, frame quality one, that's like the highest quality. You can change that to three, four, five. Um, I'm not sure. The higher number you put here, the lower the quality will be. I don't know what the range is. So it does use a lot of temporary space. It definitely needs a, a lot of temporary space. Like let's say you have an hour of video files, a video file that's an hour long, and it can convert every single frame to a JPEG. You need a lot of space for that. So yeah, gigs of space. I think maybe an hour, I don't know, this is definitely dependent upon your frame quality setting here. I recently installed a very large RAID drive, so I'm good. Now I added this, this is one of the this is one of the things I added to the program. If you do dash dash extra space and then put in quotes as let me see. Okay, so this is the re regular jump cutter one here. Here's the here's the one that I use. Uh, dash dash extra and then I put in whatever FFmpeg options you want. Before you couldn't pass just any FFmpeg options to FFmpeg using this application, but I modified it so that you can. So anything you want to pass to it that is an FFmpeg command, you can do in dash dash extra and then put it in quotes. And this is where I'm using my GPU. And then I'm setting the audio to 256, change, setting the preset to slow, video encoding to 25 megabits, and then uh, output file. This is where it puts the time and the date of the file. So, okay, so the things that you want to change are this silent threshold, and before this was set to one, and the frame margin. You can do five, or if you want to have, like, if you're running, like, I usually shoot at 60 frames a second. If I want there to be a couple of seconds between audio, like, whatever you put here for the frame rate, it's going to be doubled between the audio. So, because this is the beginning and the ending of when it hears. So if I'm shooting it for 60 frames a second and I want a couple of seconds after that, I'll just put 120 frames. So I know that anything 100, 120 frames after it stops hearing that threshold, it'll keep. And then it'll also keep 120 frames before it hits the other threshold, which is a total of 240 frames, which would be at 60 frames a second, four seconds. And that's about it for cutting out audio, cutting out silence, from your video clips. Again, uh, it's best to record with this in mind. If you have a lot of extraneous audio going on, this is gonna get more difficult, but if you have something like this, like I'm here in a room, I've got this lapel mic on, it's recording directly into the lapel mic, my voice is the loudest thing, it's gonna be easy to use, no problem. 
But if I'm like hanging out with friends and there's lots of people talking around and I'm trying to vlog, which I don't do, or something like that, I'm talking to the camera and I just want the parts of me talking, it's gonna be really not practical. So you need to set up your environment to use this application like that. And even if it's not set up that, like that, you can still use it to cut out a lot of lulls and then you can just do your manual cuts after that. So this application has saved me tons of time, tons of time. And I hope you guys can enjoy using this. Jump Cutter Ultra, regular bad file. This is for people that maybe don't have a GPU that you wanna use for encoding. Let's see, the frame sample here is set to three. I think that is what it's set to by default. Um, I also upped the quality to 48. It used to be 44. Um, and the original one by Kerry KH didn't properly detect the frame rate. You'd have to specify the frame rate, but now you don't. And there's other things that this can do if you watch some of the videos that he has out on it, you can see. But for just cutting out the silence or the lulls in your video, this works the way it is perfectly. I did have to spend a couple of weeks working on it so that it automatically detected the frame rate because it didn't do that before. I also made it so that it automatically deletes the temp folder because sometimes if you would stop it before it finished processing, it would have this temp folder. And then when you would try to run it, it would say, oh, there's a temp folder and it wouldn't do anything with it. It would just error out. So now I tell it to delete the temp folder if it, if it exists. If it doesn't, it gives you an error, but it continues on. So that's one thing I did. I also made it so that you can pass any custom FFmpeg commands to FFmpeg using this, which previously you couldn't do that. I upped the sample rate to 4800, or I set that to default. I set that to default before it was like 44.1. I In my bat file, I have it set to name it based on the time that it's doing the encode. So previously, it would just try to name it the same, like it had the same name. So if you tried to pass a file to it a second time and it already encoded it, it would ask you if you want to overwrite it. This way, if you want to see what different settings do, you don't have to overwrite your file. It just changes the date and time on the front of the file. Changes It adds that to the front of the file name. All right, guys, that is what I'm calling Jump Cutter Ultra. I will leave links in the video description to the author's GitHub and to some videos that he posted on it. I think this is an amazing program. It works really well for me. And I didn't find a whole lot of things online about this. And there are some people that are trying to use it as a Python script because he put he made it as a Python script. And there's some people that have trouble getting Python running. So I was able to successfully convert it to an executable. So you don't need to worry about Python. It works amazing. Please leave a comment uh, if you like this. If you have any questions, let me know. I this is one of my this is one of my best tools in my arsenal of video editing for sure. It saves me so much time. And so I'm hoping it can save you guys time too. All right, if you like this video, give me a like, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. If you didn't like it, give me a thumbs down and I'll catch you guys later. Thanks.